Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm talking about a book prize that I, I mean, kills a breeze anywhere on that, but like a book prize that I um, really fell in love with last year and sort of was in many ways uh, sort of it led to some of my absolute favourite books from last year um, and that is the Wainwright Prize and it's a prize that's been going for about 10 years now um, and is a prize that focuses on nature writing and sort of in recent years they've sort of opened up the categories a little bit more so started as just nature writing now it has um, a prize for global conservation and um, one for children's um, and sort of young young adults um, sort of writing as well. Um, I'm not going to focus on the young adult one partly because I think I don't really have the sort of frame of reference with a lot of those books. Um, they're not really aimed at me. I don't have a kid <laughs> as well. And so, you know, it's all those sorts of things. But um, these two prizes, I uh, the two shortlists um, I'm going to be doing as separate videos just because I think um, they're just such fantastic books and I really want to talk um, all about them. So this one, I'm just going to focus on the nature writing shortlist and I will also film um, one for the global conservation uh, one as well, just because they're both, they're all fantastic books. Um, but I want them to all have their, their own proper time without this this video being like four hours long. So let's get started. We'll start with the first one alphabetically and also the winner, um, which is Goshawk Summer by James Aldred. Um, and this is just such a beautiful, beautiful book. I adored it. I read it while I was on holiday and it was such a good holiday read because um, it's not only just such a sumptuous book in terms of its language, but it also just talks so much about escape and about noticing things. Um, and also has sort of echoes of uh, things around lockdown as well. So um, essentially this, um, James Aldred himself is um, a wildlife photographer. Um, and that comes across a lot in this book, not only because he obviously then just talks about photography, uh, but also because just the way he talks about nature is through the eyes of someone who is carefully observing, who is patient, who is letting nature kind of show itself and not kind of forcing it to do something that it isn't. Um, and so he is sort of just basically following goshawks, um, who are these sort of these big kind of quite ridiculous birds in many ways. They're these sort of hunting birds, but they, um, the reason I say ridiculous is because he talks a lot in his book about their kind of quirks, their sort of personalities. There are quite a few things they do that don't seem to have any human explanation, but seem to make sense in their world. So for example, if a male goshawk is looking after the nest, when the female goshawk returns, she tends to pick up sticks and then throw them at the male goshawk. Um, and that seems to be the way to kind of be like, hey, you're done now, it's my turn. Um, <laughs> but he sort of just is observing these beautiful, beautiful creatures and watching their world. Meanwhile, there's this sort of, um, this beautiful dissection of um, understand, well, really like focusing in on a specific time in uh, the world, sort of the first and second lockdowns in the UK. And so he talks a lot about how he's escaping to nature and being in the woods when there's nobody else around. And this is in the New Forest, um, in the south of England. And it's just fascinating to kind of, that he sort of zeroed in on this very, very specific time um, in the world. And I just think this is a fantastic, fantastic book. I just thought it was gorgeous. It's so beautifully written. And uh, yeah, I think it was already one of my favorites from the list anyway, and I was delighted to see that it won. Next up, uh, we have Nicola Chester with On Gallows Down. Um, and this again, I mean, as I'm gonna say for all of these books, beautiful. Um, but I, I really loved this book as well. I thought um, it was so interesting. In, in this book, uh, Nicola Chester talks a lot about um, protest and sort of how place and belonging kind of sit in with um, within all of that. So for example, she focuses on a few areas where she grew up and we've got things like the um, campaign for nuclear disarmament. Um, we've got things around protecting local wildlife and all of these sorts of protests and campaigns are all happening to pr protect a local area. And actually what she charts in this book is how generationally these places get passed down and so does the activism around them. So people <clears throat> standing up for uh, Gallows Down or for other parts of land in the past act as inspiration for people in the current uh, time to keep protecting those places. Um, and what I think is, is so stunning about this is this book sort of then kind of comes towards the end of her looking at um, how she's going to pass the the world on to her daughters and particularly gallows down and how you know she really hopes that her kids and, and their kids can look out onto this landscape and still see the same thing that their ancestors would have seen um and how powerful that is uh just to be able to that, that nature has a really strong 
place in in how we see ourselves that you know a lot of the time when we think of our home our hometown you know we talk about things like oh that that building's changed and i remember in my day that thing was different and what have you and actually that is so imprinted into who we are as humans um and so i think this book is just is stunning for how it approaches this next up we have anna fleming with time on rock and again i also read this on holiday i read quite a few of these on holiday um and this is um, charting her as a rock climber and particularly her interactions with nature as a result. So um, she talks, for example, firstly about how rock climbing is often dominated by men and um, how quite a lot of the field is sort of men talking about various things and, you know, um, and sort of seeming to sort of disregard that a lot of women do this as well. But also she then talks about kind of the real kind of almost communication or communion that happens between yourself and nature whilst you're doing this you know you're right smack bang next to a cliff face and in doing so you know you're seeing all the little insects scuttling around you're seeing little areas where birds hide um you're seeing how the landscape has been shaped by bits of nature whether that's water whether that's wind or you know whatever um, and so there's this real kind of up close view of nature, which I just thought was really beautifully done. Um, and it just, it reads really quickly. I just found it such a captivating read of just, you know, something I know nothing about. Um, but she talks about how there's such a, a sort of, again, tradition of this. And, and like with um, On Gallows Down, this idea that actually these bits of nature stay the same year on year, right? These rocks have been there for hundreds or thousands of years. Um, and so you're watching, you're right up close to this beautiful part of nature doing its thing. Um, and I just, I, I thought this was just such an interesting book. Um, I just, yeah, I, I really commend um, this book and just how engaging it is about a topic that I knew nothing about. Um, and I really do think it, it's a fun addition to this list as well. Next up, we have Matthew Green with Shadowlands. Um, and this book essentially takes us through various parts of the UK that have disappeared for whatever reason. So for some of those, that's, um, it went, you know, uh, uh, an old town that basically was eroded away and sort of was lost into the sea because it was on the, the edge of a cliff that eroded. Um, in some, it was a, we've got a Welsh village that was intentionally flooded um, to, to sort of help provide water to Liverpool um, during the sort of industrial age. We've got um, various other parts um, of the country that have sort of disappeared for whatever reason. And now all that's really left are these sort of echoes on the landscape of them. So whether that's bits of um, land underwater with sort of, you know, old graves or old whatever sort of un under that water or things that we can see um, on the landscape that aren't immediately visibly present. Um, and I mean, not only is this gorgeously written, I just, I found this so captivating as a book. I think it also is just, I don't know how you come up with the idea of a, this book or how you go about researching this. I just found it utterly fascinating. Um, you know, you've got pictures of old maps in there of, you know, an old village that no longer exists. Um, the, the the Welsh village that I mentioned that was flooded, I found especially moving as a passage because it talks a lot about how this was a sort of a real hotbed for Welsh language and Welsh uh, culture. And um, it, the intentional flooding meant that, you know, you had people sat on the top of a hill watching as the dams were opened and the, the, the whole area was flooded and watching, you know, the area they grew up in just completely disappear. And kind of again, like with On Gallows Down, how much that sense of belonging comes from that sense of place as well. Um, so I thought it was really beautifully done. Um, definitely one of my favourite books of the year. I think I just think this is such a clever book um, and just so absolutely engaging. Next, we have Other Lands by Thomas Halliday. And this is a book that in many ways is quite different for the nature writing shortlist, um, at least in the ones that I've read so far, um, that this focuses a lot on paleontology and particularly how the the sort of the fossils that we're finding now and things that we're looking at now really tell a slightly different story to the world um, than, than we're quite used to. So, um, for example, we see sort of old fossils and old uh, plants and what that tells us not only about the conditions of those times, but actually how that might help inform us thinking about how we adapt to many of the challenges that are coming now. So like climate change, like many other things, um, because we've got, you know, these plants that have been trapped in permafrost or these, these um, 
animals or plants that have adapted to a certain way of living. Um, and this book, I just, I listened to the audiobook of this and just really enjoyed letting it wash over me because it's just such a clever and intriguing book. And again, in, in some ways it shouldn't work. It's so interesting because of just how it builds this argument. Um, and like the judges were saying quite a lot during the prize itself, almost creates its own new category and sort of genre of book, because actually we haven't had many things quite like this. Um, and so I just, I, I think this is a really interesting uh, book and I really do urge you to check it out. And last but not least, we have The Instant by Amy Liptrot. Um, and Amy Liptrot uh, won the Wainwright Prize a few years back for her book The Outrun, which I just think is a stunning, stunning book. Um, and in some ways this picks up a little bit on that itself. So The Outrun um, focused a lot on Amy Liptrot's relationship with kind of struggling with alcohol addiction and how nature was sort of a, a way of her reconnecting with the world and in some ways the instant follows on quite naturally from that where now she's living in Berlin she's in a brand new place all of a sudden um, and she is now trying to reconcile how that looks with you know she, she basically has a relationship that sort of starts and then doesn't really go anywhere and it becomes quite obsessive on her part and whereas that sounds like it'd be quite uncomfortable as you know in a book to read and, and in some parts it is in a, in a good way I think we learn how sort of she copes with some of this obsession by again refocusing on the world. She sort of again puts down her phone, she moves away from thinking about some of these things by focusing on what's actually around her, by observing, by noticing. Um, and I think that's something so particularly key across all six of these books is the way that they talk about noticing and noting things. Um, and how actually nature is all about that and the, the modern world often keeps us away from that. Um, I think The Instant does such a great job in allowing the narrator, well, allowing Amy herself to sort of really tell that story, not in a self-pitying way, but in a kind of a very real and honest way, and then reconnect it to what are the things that actually mean the most. Um, and I think it's a, a beautiful little book. And all of these together are the shortlist, um, a really incredible shortlist, I think. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed reading all six of these books. Um, I think the right book won in terms of Goswalk Summer. I think it's such a stunning book. Um, Shadowlands would have been my other pick for the win. Um, but quite frankly, any of these six could have won and I'd have been pretty happy because they're a great list. Um, On Gallows Down and Shadowlands were both highly commended as well, which I think are, are very, you know, very well deserved um, as well. I really just do urge you if any of these sound interesting to you to pick up any of them because I just found this such a stunning set of books um, that really open up the way we think about nature, the way we think about the world, um, and particularly about what we want to save about what's around us. I've been Bob talking about this. I'm going to do another video um, on the Global Conservation shortlist um, and I'll be back with that soon. So take care. Speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.